So, you want to be a doctor? It isn't easy, but your chances of being accepted to a medical school improve if you plan ahead so that you can submit your strongest possible application. That's what this video is all about helping you start your plan. You see, each medical school routinely receives thousands of applications for maybe 100 to 200 seats. Now that's less than a 2% chance of acceptance at any one particular medical school. However, nationwide there are 18,000 seats on average for about 43,000 applicants. Now that's a 42% chance of acceptance at a medical school. So that's why the average applicant applies to 25 to 30 medical schools. And it's also why it's so important to plan early, to submit the strongest and most competitive application that's possible for you. Now, what should you major in? Well, the answer to that is really anything you want. Med schools don't care what your major is. However, there are some real advantages to a chemistry or biology major. First of all, the prerequisites for medical school applications mostly involve science and math courses. These courses are also part of a chemistry BA or biology BS degree program. For other majors, these prereqs would have to be taken as additional electives on top of the courses required for that particular major. So it's a little more efficient if you're a chemistry or biology major. Secondly, general chemistry and biology and organic chemistry tend to be among the most impacted at the university. And a priority system has been established to deal with this fact. Chemistry and biology majors have the highest possible priority for enrollment in these courses. Pre-medical students with different majors need to see the pre-med advisor to declare their pre-med status, which will improve their enrollment priority. Thirdly, medical schools look at your science GPA as well as your overall GPA. If you are not a chemistry or biology major and take the minimum number of science prereq courses, then a poor grade in any one of these prereqs will have a larger impact on your science GPA. So being a chemistry or biology major will have a buffering effect on your science GPA if you do poorly in any one science class. Finally, as a chemistry or biology major, there will be many research opportunities available to you. And around 90% of the applicants to medical school have research experience on their resumes. Now Fresno State has its own pre-medical web pages at www.fresnostate.edu slash premed and the left navigation frame has a list of links that will provide very useful information for getting into medical school. One of them, undergraduate academic preparation, provides a list of the prerequisite courses required by most medical schools and for the MCAT. But we need to note that medical school prereqs vary a bit from school to school, but since you're going to be applying to 25 to 30 schools, you will want all of these prereqs to be on your academic record. So let's go over what they are. First, one year of general chemistry, that's the chemistry for majors, chemistry 1A and 1B, not 3A, not Chem 10, for example. One year of organic chemistry, that's chemistry 128A and the lab 129A, and the second semester 128B, the lecture, and 129B, the lab. You'll need a year of biology, that's biology 1A and 1B. You'll need a year of physics, and we suggest the physics for non-majors, physics 2A and 2B. You'll need a year of math, either math 75 and 76, or math 75 and math 101, which is statistics. Do not take statistics from psychology or other departments. You want it to have the math designation for the statistics course. Uh, one year of English, 
and for reasons we'll explain a bit later at least one upper division course that's English 101, 102, or 103 or even two of these would be good. You're doing this for the MCAT and we'll explain why later. You'll need a semester of introductory biochemistry that's chemistry 150 if you're not a chemistry major chemistry 155 and other biochemistry courses if you are a chemistry major psychology 10 sociology 1 you'll need these courses for the new MCAT starting in the spring of 2015 medical schools usually prefer most prerequisite courses to be taken at four-year schools not AP, not community colleges. Now there's some variability depending on the medical school and if you take your lower division courses at a community college and then in that same discipline take upper division courses at a four-year school and do well in them it'll probably be okay but you should to be sure call the admissions department of the schools you're planning on applying to to find out if that is going to work. The general rule of thumb is to take your prereqs at a four-year school. The strongest applicants are going to have a high GPA 3.6 to 4.0. They're going to have extensive volunteer experiences, preferably medically related. They're going to have some research experience. About 90% of applicants have research experience. And they're going to have superb letters of reference written by those who know them well. And finally, they're going to have very high MCAT scores. 30 minimal or 32 or better would be, uh, would be good. So let's talk about high GPAs. How do you get high GPAs? First and foremost, you reserve time, plenty of time to study, three hours per week for each course unit. So in a course like Chemistry 1A, it's a five unit course. That's five times three, 15 hours per week you reserve for studying Chemistry 1A. That's a huge time commitment but that's what it takes to get an A in that course. And in all these science courses, you need to have a lot of time that you can study, learn, need to learn how to manage your time, and you really have to put in the hours to study in order to get strong grades. And you will need high grades to get into a medical school. The way you do it is that you skim the chapter first, then you read in detail, and you attempt all practice problems you encounter along the way, and then you check the answers. You do the assigned homework, and if necessary, uh, additional problems. You check the answers, and if necessary, you view the solutions. For some people, working in small groups helps. Explain to each other how to solve each problem. This will be very useful in learning the concept behind the problem. Unlike high school, we're not interested that you memorize questions. We're interested that you learn the concept behind the question. And then if you get a similar question, you can figure it out because you know the concept. That's very hard to do if you're memorizing an algorithm for a particular problem can't generalize with an algorithm. Participate in supplemental instruction classes and departmental tutorials. And finally, visit your instructors and get help on difficult problems. What you're really trying to do here is set up a relationship with that instructor. Make their acquaintance. And why do you want to do that? Because down the road, you're going to need letters of recommendation from people who know you well. If you go to your instructors and you talk with them, you chat with them, you get help from them, they begin to feel that they know you and that they can write an honest, 
letter of recommendation with the detail necessary to have credibility. That's why you want to visit your instructors. So after high GPAs, you're going to want to know about extensive volunteer experiences, preferably medically related. You're going to need to seek out medically related volunteer experiences, shadowing, scribe programs, free clinics, hospice and hospitals, etc. And we have a long list of possibilities at our website, fresnostate.edu slash premed, and then the volunteering tab on the navigation frame. There you'll see experiences like volunteering at hospices or the Nancy Hines Hospice, volunteering for the Tzu Chi Fresno Medical Team, Marjorie Mason Center, Women's Shelter, uh, homes for developmentally disabled uh, and mental health centers, volunteer programs at local hospitals, physicians shadowing and scribe programs at St. Agnes and at community hospitals. So all of this is explained in more detail on the website. So go to the website when you start thinking about volunteer experiences. Another thing that you'll find very useful is if you keep a journal of your volunteer experiences because when it comes time to write your personal statement, the journal will be invaluable. It will jog your memory on all the experiences that you can detail. Next on our list, research experience. Ask around and find out which faculty are doing research and accepting undergraduates. You can do that in your freshman year, although you probably won't start research until your sophomore year. You're going to visit the faculty and learn more about their research projects and how you could participate. About 90% of applicants to medical school have research experience. And then, of course, as we mentioned before, superb letters of reference written by those who know you well. You want strong letters written with a great deal of detail by faculty who know you and this gives credibility to their letter of reference. Do not wait until you're close to the deadline for your application before you ask faculty to write these letters. That's not fair to them. They're not going to be able to write you a very good letter. They might be busy and you might find yourself up the creek without really good letters and that's not going to help, believe me. You want to ask well in advance and then you want to gently remind the instructor, if nothing's happening, uh, to write these letters for you. But you do that well in advance of the time you submit your application. Finally, you're going to want high MCAT scores, at least 30 or better, preferably better than 30. And how do you get a high MCAT score? You study like mad for the MCAT. There are all kinds of programs and books and commercial courses for the MCAT. Uh, you're going to take it seriously and study as you would for a four-unit course, uh, 12 hours per week for a month or even two months. Now, some students prefer the structure and expertise of a commercial preparation class such as Kaplan or Princeton Review and others have the self-discipline that they can do the study on their own. You have to look at the reviews and know yourself well enough to know which route you want to take but you do have to study. Before you take the MCAT you should have taken all your science prereqs and introductory biochemistry and the psychology and sociology classes mentioned before. Yes, these MCAT questions are tough and that's why you need to prepare by either taking a course or doing the workbooks and taking practice tests. We didn't mention that. Uh, you can link to those through our pre-med website. Each practice test, the first one is free and then each subsequent one is $35, $40. But there's a part of the MCAT that science majors mess up 
almost consistently. They do poorer on this section of the MCAT than any other, and that is the reading comprehension part of the MCAT. Science majors have a hard time with that. And that's why we recommend English 101 or 102 or 103 or even two of these courses. Because in these courses you're going to do a lot of reading, a lot of writing, and a lot of critical thinking. And it's nothing you can cram for. It's not a skill you can come to quickly. It takes time to develop this. And that's why we recommend upper division English courses. So here's a timeline that might be beneficial to you pre-med students. In year one, your freshman year, you're going to first off see an advisor in your major and come up with an academic plan. You're going to talk to the pre-medical advisor after you look over the pre-med website and have questions. And you're going to explore research and volunteer possibilities. You don't need to start those your freshman year necessarily, but you do want to lay the groundwork. In the summer after your freshman year, you'll do volunteer work and or take summer classes. In your sophomore year, you begin volunteer work and uh, possibly a research project. If you're a non-biology or a non-chemistry major, begin taking your science prereqs for medical school. In the summer after your sophomore year, again, more volunteer work and summer classes and possibly research. Now, in your junior year, a lot begins to happen. In the fall of your junior year, you reserve a seat early on for the spring MCAT exam. These seats fill up early, and you don't want to come to this late, believe me. So early in your junior year, reserve a seat for the MCAT. And, of course, volunteer work and research. In the spring of your junior year, finish up all the remaining med school prereqs, you're going to take the MCAT. Early in the spring, you're going to line up your letters of recommendation so that they will be complete and in your application by the end of the semester. And you're going to actually start your MCAS or AACOMAS, that's for osteopathic schools, the application service applications. You're going to start those in the spring of your junior year. And then no later than June 15, you're going to send in your applications using the application service for medical schools, AMCAS, or the application service for osteopathic schools. And of course, if you're applying to a Caribbean medical school, you're going to be sending it in. That's right. You send it in at the end of your junior year it takes about a full year to figure out if you're going to get accepted or not. Well, maybe not a full year, but nine months is not unusual at all. So you don't start medical school until after you graduate, of course. So you, you have that whole senior year to do more research, volunteer work, uh, or take interviews, etc. Well, you need a plan when you're thinking about this. You need a plan that builds on your strengths so that you stand out from the crowd in a good way. You plan experiences that will help you demonstrate your leadership, your motivation, your initiative, your resilience, your interpersonal skills. All of these are qualities that medical schools look for in deciding who they're going to accept. These experiences will help you write a compelling personal statement as well and lend sincerity and context to your personal interviews. Now what can you do if your GPA and or your MCAT scores are bronze? They're too low for US allotropic medical schools, medical schools in the United States. Well, on our website, there's a link called Alternative Strategies. And the three parts of it, Plan B, 
osteopathic medicine and physician assistant. So if you find that you're not getting up to 3.6 in your GPA or your MCAT is a little weak, uh, below 30, you might think about these options. There are programs that some schools have, not in Fresno or the Central Valley, more like in Los Angeles or the Bay Area, that are post-baccalaureate programs that are designed for career changers. That is, that people who want to change their career and go to medical school and become doctors. Or another part of that kind of program is for academic record enhancement to get those prereq scores up to a point where you're competitive. And they last between one and two years depending on you know how, how many courses you're going to need. The website has a list of all the programs in California that provide this service. There are Caribbean medical schools. You only need a 3.3 or so and a 28 or higher on the MCAT, maybe even a little lower on that on the MCAT. Uh, Ross, St. George, and AUA are among the three best. They're quite successful in placing non-competitive residencies. In other words, family practice, internal medicine, etc. It's more difficult to get a highly competitive specialty if you go to a Caribbean school, like uh, surgery, whatever. It's possible, however. Uh, and, of course, these are costly schools, but med medical schools in general are pretty costly as well. There's osteopathic medical schools. The average GPA should be around 3.3 or higher, and your MCAT, again, 28 I'd put down, but 27 could get you in. It depends on the school. And again, uh, these have the most success in placing non-competitive residencies, family practice, internal medicine. The osteopathic philosophy is a holistic one where they treat the whole body and they are very concerned with preventative measures. In just about every hospital, certainly in the West, you're going to find DO, Doctors of Osteopathy, and their salaries are good. You know. So that's another option if you don't have a stellar GPA. Finally, there's physician assistant. The prereqs are much less than a regular MD or DO program, but you need between 1,000 and 2,000 patient care hours as a prerequisite. Physician assistant came out of the Vietnam War when we had a lot of medics returning who had skills that they had learned in the field, but no formal training as such. And they wanted to mainstream all this experience, get it out, and get it useful. And they came up with something called a physician assistant. But the idea that people coming into physician assistants are going to have a, a lot of experience with patient care is a hallmark of the program, and they maintain that requirement. So you're going to need between 1,000 to 2,000 patient care hours. How to do this? Look at the website. You will be licensed to practice medicine under the supervision of a physician, but you will be able to prescribe medications and uh, order tests and things like that. Finally, we want you to get plugged in. Contact me, Dr. Frank, and declare as a pre-med student. Get on our mailing list and learn what's happening. And join and participate in the Fresno State Pre-Med Club. Also, participate in conferences like the big UC Davis Pre-Med Conference in October, or our own in the spring, for that matter, that the Pre-Med Club puts on. Remember, a dream doesn't become reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work. So good luck to you. And please come see me. Thanks for listening.